Okay, before we even start today's video, you're gonna have to ignore this little mess that is up on the wall at the minute. We swatched these paints yesterday. Let's not even talk about the red, okay? The red is really upsetting me. <laughs> I already can't wait to cover that because that is definitely not what I thought that paint was gonna look like in the tin. But we are currently in the process of decorating our bedroom, hence the paint swatches on the wall. I mean, whilst we're here, feel free to let me know which of the first four you like. But anyway, welcome to today's video, everyone. I hope you're all doing well. I hope you're having a good weekend. As you can probably tell from the title, today we're going to be talking about my journey, experience, advice, things that I wish I knew, basically everything to do with 75 Heart. I was actually hoping to film this video sooner, but I feel like it's actually kind of worked out better that I've waited a couple of weeks now that I have finished. What date are we on today? It's currently the 7th and I believe I finished on the 15th of March. One, two, oh my gosh, it's been three weeks, three whole weeks since I finished 75 Hard and I feel like it's worked out better that I'm filming it now rather than sooner and kind of talk a little bit about how things have been the past couple of weeks as well. I'm sure if you've clicked on this video then you probably already know what 75 Hard is but for anyone who isn't familiar, um, 75 Hard is basically a fitness lifestyle health challenge is how I would probably describe it. The whole challenge is that for 75 days you have to eat healthy. There's no sort of specific diet with it but the one rule to do with diet is to like stick to a diet. You're supposed to do two 45 minute workouts every single day, one of which has to be outdoors. You're supposed to drink a gallon of water every single day. I think it's a gallon. I actually ended up reducing my water intake a little bit. Um, so I did two liters of water minimum every single day. No alcohol for 75 days. Reading 10 pages of a self-help book every single day and also taking daily progress photos. So it's basically just a challenge that is designed to help you get a little bit fitter, get you into more of a routine. I kind of just saw it as a way to get myself into a routine. The whole reason why I decided to do 75 hard was basically because I was just in not a particularly great place at the end of last year in terms of like my fitness, what I was eating. Um, mentally, I wasn't feeling really great. I just wasn't feeling very healthy. And I mean, it's so typical. I feel like at the start of a new year, you always get this like enthusiasm to start going to the gym again and to start being healthier. Um, and I thought, you know what? I'm probably really gonna struggle doing this and I'm probably gonna hate it some days, but I really just wanted to give it a go and see how it went. And 75 days later, and I actually pretty much stuck to it. <laughs> Not completely stuck to it, but I feel like I did kind of my version of 75 hard. So I'm gonna quickly chat through every single like element of the challenge and how I found certain things. Um, what I enjoyed, what I didn't enjoy, what I saw the most difference in, all of that good stuff. So we may as well actually start with the reading because I have to say, the reading was the one thing that I didn't stick to. I was terrible at the reading. I feel like it was because, I don't know if this is just me, but I, I'm either the sort of person that reads like a whole book in two days or I'm just not reading. Like I, I really struggle with the concept of reading 10 pages of a book every day which is what you're supposed to do throughout 75 hard i did do it for probably about a week or so but it just felt really unnatural to me i when i'm reading a book i have to like sit down and really delve into it and really like focus put some time aside to just really like read for a good few hours because otherwise i just I don't know, it takes me a little bit of time to get into the first few pages. And I just, I think it's like a focus thing probably. So the whole idea of doing just 10 pages a day, it just didn't, I don't know, it just wasn't working for me. And I was like, Do you know what? I know I'm gonna read this book at some point. I'm probably gonna read it in like a good couple of days. You're also supposed to do a nonfiction self-help book. Um, so the book that I chose was The Power of Now. And I have to say, I've really been enjoying this book. I'm probably about 100 pages in at this point. For me, I found this really beneficial as someone who suffers a little bit with anxiety, suffers sometimes with depression. I mean, I've never actually gone to the doctors and been diagnosed, so I also don't want to completely like self-diagnose myself, but I am quite like an anxious overthinker. And I found that this book just brought me so much peace and comfort. 
um, because it, it basically teaches you the importance of just like living in the now and being present in the now. Realistically, anything that is in the past is obviously gone, done, can't be changed. Anything in the future is never actually guaranteed. All we are ever actually like truly experiencing is the present moment. So I've actually really been enjoying reading this. I'd really recommend it for anyone else that, yeah, it's just a bit of an overthinker, dwells a lot on stuff worries a lot about stuff, anything in that sort of realm. I found that this has brought me a lot of peace. So I did find the reading aspect of 75 hard enjoyable. It just, I think just like the structure of it being 10 pages a day, it just wasn't really clicking with me. So it's the one part of the challenge that I didn't properly complete, but I do plan to finish this book soon. In terms of the diet and the working out, let's speak about the diet first because there's no sort of like specific diet that you're supposed to follow with 75 hard. It basically just tells you to pick a diet and stick to it. So I wanted to put my sort of like focus on protein, having like a high protein diet. So I did use my fitness pal. Um, and I kind of roughly tracked my calories. I find calorie tracking a little bit difficult sometimes. I don't like to completely box myself in and be really, really strict with it because then I find that that's not healthy in itself. But I do like to use my fitness pal just as a little bit of a guide and also for things like my macros as well. So knowing that I was definitely hitting my protein goal every day, I basically had a protein goal of 100 grams every single day and that's what I wanted to hit. Which I have to say, I did actually end up doing. I also decided to cut out anything like chocolate, crisps, anything that was sort of like, you could maybe describe as an unhealthy snack. Not to call those things unhealthy because I have been having like chocolate and crisps here and there since, and I think they are absolutely fine in moderation. But seeing as it's called 75 hard, <laughs> I wanted to somewhat make it hard for myself. Like I wanted to, I just wanted to see, I was like, I wanna see if I can go 75 days and not have any chocolate because I feel like in my head, that just seemed really, really challenging, but I kind of wanted to challenge myself in that way. Um, and I actually stuck to it. I didn't have any chocolate, I didn't have any crisps, any like ice cream, chips. Like if we ever got a takeaway, um, we would always get at Nando's because having like the chicken from Nando's would mean that I would get my protein in But the only side that I would get was broccoli So I had no chips, no garlic bread, no coleslaw Like none of the things that I would usually get if I got a Nando's and I actually really really enjoyed it I have to say it was probably one of my favorite parts about 75 Hub because we tried so many new recipes as well a lot of which I did share over on Instagram on TikTok. I did vlog a few days over on TikTok I think I vlogged every day for maybe like the first two weeks and then I kind of just vlogged days here and there So if you want to see like more sort of like detailed days of what I would do during 75 hard Then you can find them over on TikTok. I came across Soph's Plant Kitchen when I was looking for healthy recipes because I didn't want to go like strictly vegan or veggie, but I did want to try to sort of like reduce my, min my meat intake because I don't really like cooking chicken. I don't really like cooking meats. I don't mind cooking things like salmon, um, but I just don't like cooking chicken. So the only time I really had chicken was if we got a Nando's. So I was kind of on the hunt for like good high protein, veggie and vegan meals, which is when I came across Soph's Plant Kitchen and we fell in love with her recipes we tried the lasagna like the sort of aubergine chickpea lasagna one of our absolute favorite the butter chickpea curry that she makes we had for valentine's day and that was just absolutely delicious even on things like pancake day we found a way to still have pancakes but we made cottage cheese pancakes so they were healthier and still higher protein we actually had a lot of fun with like the meals and the recipes and it felt so nice to actually just like cook dinners and do a food shop and buy actual vegetables and actual things that were making proper meals and i just felt so much healthier for it i felt so much better i had no stomach problems because listen I'm a sensitive girl in many ways, <laughs> my stomach being one of them. And again, at the end of last year, we were ordering so much takeaway. We were in such an unhealthy place with like eating and I just felt shit all the time. Like I felt terrible. Um, so I have to say like the cooking aspect of it was one of my favorite parts of 75 Hard and actually something that 
don't get me wrong, I've fallen off a little bit the past couple of weeks because obviously I've been treating myself to burgers, pizzas, alcohol, whatever. But it's been really nice to kind of find some recipes that we really love and that we're going to continue making. My favourite thing that we made the whole sort of 75 days and what we're actually going to have for dinner tonight was the salmon. Oh my goodness. I kind of like combined a few recipes that I found from different places. So M the Nutritionist is someone that I also really love on socials um, for like recipe inspo. Her like feta dip with this sort of like chickpea bean salad that I found on Instagram with a fillet of salmon on top. Oh my God, it is the most delicious thing I've ever eaten. Dan, before we started eating this was like, adamant that he did not like salmon now he's obsessed with salmon it's one of his favorite meals that we make so if anyone wants any sort of like specific recipes breakdowns that kind of thing then definitely let me know down below i think i did actually vlog making the salmon not long ago so i'll link that video down below as well but oh my god we had so much fun and it was actually just really nice to cook more and try new things experiment with food again i'd gotten into such a rut of just like making the same things or just like not even cooking like just getting a takeaway or just having like toast for dinner because i couldn't be bothered trying to like make something <laughs> it sounds so stupid but actually having to like cook high protein nutritious meals i really enjoyed and i feel like it's one of the things that i felt the most throughout the whole 75 days in terms of the working out so the two exercises a day I knew that was probably the thing that I was going to find the most difficult because I think especially as a girl, when it gets to that time of the month, like I, I mean this is going to be a bit TMI but it is currently time of the month for me now. The week leading up to that, I am so tired, I'm all over the place with like just my brain and my feelings and like the PMS symptoms are real, like they are no joke. So it was the one thing I was a little bit worried about because usually when I get to that point where I'm just feeling like crap and I know I'm due on and I'm feeling really bloated and I'm feeling really tired, the last thing that I wanna do is work out. So that is one thing that I would say actually for the girls watching. You have to just like remember to be patient and kind with yourself, especially in those moments. So my biggest thing with the workouts was to make sure that I wasn't overdoing it and I wasn't pushing myself too hard because I knew, again, similarly with the diet, like if I was pushing myself too hard and I was trying to go to the gym every single day, and really, really push myself and do weightlifting and all of these kinds of things, I would have just absolutely hated it. And I feel like the whole point of 75 hard is to kind of set you up to then when the 75 days are, are like gone and done you've got like a good solid routine that you actually find doable and enjoyable so i did have a few days at the start of 75 hard where i did go to the gym but something that i've actually learned throughout this whole thing is that i just don't really enjoy the gym like i just don't really enjoy going to the gym i'm not much of like a weights girl anymore i'm not much of a car like i don't enjoy cardio i mean i do want to try getting into running at some point but that will be hopefully when it's a little bit sunnier and a little bit drier outside i don't know i just i really enjoyed it a couple of years ago but i think that was also when i had a pt and i kind of had someone to go to the gym with now i just i just don't feel like a gym girl anymore i just don't feel like i enjoy weightlifting as much um, I mean don't get me wrong it was good for like a couple of days here and there but it was one of the things that kind of surprised me throughout the whole 75 days because you could actually quite easily do 75 hard and never step inside a gym that's pretty much what I did so my outdoor workout every single day was just a walk with Freddie which that didn't really feel like an adjustment in that sense because obviously we take Freddie for a walk every day anyway so obviously you could do like an outdoor run if you wanted to if it was summertime and it was a bit warmer and sunnier outside I might have done horse riding I would have loved to have maybe tried tennis yeah I feel like there's a whole range of things that you can do for your outdoor workout but as I said I didn't want to sort of overwhelm myself or do anything like too strenuous on any days because you have to work out every every single day so the minute you go overboard and you wake up feeling like achy and exhausted you're already setting yourself back on that day so my outdoor workout every single day was a walk with Freddie in fact 
tell a lie <laughs> we did do some cycling at center parks which was nice to kind of like mix it up so there are like a few things that you could do for it and then if my indoor workouts as i said i probably went to the gym less than 10 times Less than 10 of the 75 days I went to the gym. We did badminton, which I absolutely loved. I cannot wait to start playing badminton again. We haven't been playing recently because the rackets are in my car, which has been in the garage for like a month and a half. And we keep thinking it's gonna come back and it's just not come back yet. So badminton, I'll definitely be playing again soon. I started ice skating, which is another thing that I want to try to continue doing. This was kind of like the fun thing about the workouts is that you kind of have to mix it up a little bit. I mean, once you find things that you really enjoy doing, for example, I fell in love with Pilates. Once you find things that you really enjoy doing, it makes it a lot easier. But I do also think it's fun, or at least I found it fun, to kind of try a few different things as well. So badminton, I never would have usually tried or played absolutely love it now cannot wait to play it again ice skating definitely want to go back soon again i've loved going ice skating i've loved trying something new in that sense yoga i also really enjoyed doing and i found that yoga was great for the days where i was just feeling really really low energy so time of the month or i don't know just if i was feeling really exhausted or i'd had a really busy day and i didn't want to do a workout yoga is a really great one because you can kind of find like different yoga classes or tutorials on YouTube or online that are different sort of like levels of intensity and Pilates just became like my favorite go-to thing and the thing that I loved about doing Pilates and yoga especially is that I can just do them at home so towards the end of 75 hard I found myself in a pretty solid routine of like I would wake up in the morning at about eight o'clock I would do a 45 minutes or like a 40 minutes Pilates class and I would have my breakfast which was like a smoothie or some porridge then I would take Freddie for his walk get back it was probably about 11 o'clock everything is pretty much done for the day and to be honest I feel like I probably would have seen more like drastic results in terms of my body if I'd been going to the gym more but as I said, the whole point of like 75 hard for me was to establish a routine that I would be happy doing continuously, like outside of 75 hard. Not that I've stuck to it much recently, because <laughs> obviously me and Mads have been to Paris. Um, I was in London for a little bit. I've only just kind of got home and like really started settling back into a routine. And then in terms of the no alcohol, that was the one thing that I kind of felt like would be quite easy for me because I'm not a particularly big drinker anyway. The only times I was a little bit worried about the no alcohol was at social events because especially with work or like friends birthdays, like it was Millie's birthday during 75 hard. It's one of those like when you're out and everyone else is drinking, I was a little bit worried that I was not necessarily going to feel left out. Um, because I don't mind like other people drinking if I'm not drinking but it's more so that I would often kind of like use alcohol a little bit to just um, bring me out of my shell more because I am quite like a shy and introverted person um, especially when it comes to like work events I don't I mean I don't really go to a lot of work events anymore because I am I don't know I just I think I get very in my head about them and I am as I said Bit of an anxious girl at times especially in so like social anxiety especially is something that i'm trying to like get better with and improve um whether i will or not who knows it just is part of who i am at the end of the day and i'm fine with that now but yeah before 75 hard i would tend to just have like you know a drink or two before an evening event especially if it was an environment where I knew other people were going to be drinking just to kind of like you know calm my nerves bring me out of my shell make me a little bit more <laughs> chatty confident and obviously during 75 hard I couldn't do that so that was the only time where I was a little bit worried but I have to say I actually really enjoyed it and it was so nice to I mean I think I only went out twice so I had Mads boohoo dinner and Millie's birthday I think Dan's football night but again I don't think many people were drinking then I don't know there was a couple of like nights here and there where I went out and I was around people that were drinking and usually I would have also been drinking but I didn't and I have to say I really enjoyed it like I, I just felt really like proud of myself afterwards as well and um, it probably sounds really silly but just knowing that I could actually go 
and not drink, not have to rely on alcohol in that sense and be absolutely fine. Like it just, I don't know, it just kind of made me feel really, really good and really confident and it was great just like not waking up with a hangover because I had like my first heavy night of drinking with Mads in Paris and oh my God, the day after, I felt rotten. Like I literally felt like my insides were crying. Just cannot handle it the same way anymore um, as when I was like 18, 19, 20. So it's probably again, something that I'm gonna stick to a little bit more now is the whole like not drinking or just not having a lot to drink. Alcohol I've always found is one thing that really does make me feel very like bloated and unhealthy and like, almost like inflamed. Just not drinking at all. I feel like it was such a nice detox. It almost, yeah, it literally did feel like a detox, like a cleanse. And it was probably one of my favorite parts of the whole 75 days. I I honestly feel like I could have kept it up and done it for like a whole year. But yeah, all in all, I really enjoyed 75 hard. I felt so proud of myself at the end. Me and Dan did do it together somewhat. He kind of stopped probably at about day 45 because he got a new job that then became like very demanding for him. But I have to say starting it with Dan and doing it together made everything so much easier. Like it just made the process a lot more like enjoyable and I found that I had more motivation because it wasn't just me having to like motivate myself. It was like me and Dan saying like, okay, we're doing a food shop. We're gonna be healthy. This is what we're gonna cook this week. This is the workouts we're doing. I definitely found that it helps. So for anyone thinking about doing 75 hard, I'd really recommend doing it with someone, even if it's not someone that you live with. I feel like I could have done it with a friend that I was texting, like my mom, if she'd wanted to do it with me. I just feel like having that extra bit of support and not necessarily doing it completely alone really helps. As I said, it's been three weeks now and <laughs> I have not been very healthy the past three weeks. I mean, I've been away twice. Me and Mads have been to Paris twice. I was in London with Dan for the weekend after 75 hard. Basically sent myself into a sugar coma with the pancakes and the Shake Shack. Yeah, I felt absolutely dreadful after London. Like the first few days after where I was just like eating whatever and doing whatever, I felt like death. So I do want to try to get back to like a bit of a routine with it because it also just felt like so normal by the end. I think that's the nice thing about it being 75 days. Like if it had just been a month, I think you'd get to a month and you'd just be like, oh, okay, it's over now. Like, thank God it's done. Um, Cause definitely at like the day 30 point, I was over it like i was so tired i just did not have the willpower i didn't want to do it i didn't care to do it i so desperately wanted to give up i was not enjoying it at all so i think the fact that it was 75 days by day like 50 i was like i i could just do this now like i, I just felt like it was part of life and i was more than happy doing it every single day because i felt so great i was in like a slight calorie deficit as well because i did want to lose a little bit of weight from the end of last year but nowhere near as strict as i previously had been because i had a tendency to do that especially when i was younger like I don't know, early 20s, I would just put myself in like a crazy calorie deficit, which is just not realistic. So I wanted to try and keep everything like as healthy and doable as possible. But anyway, I asked for some questions not long ago on Instagram. So I thought to round this video up, I would quickly answer a couple of these. So the first question was, is this challenge for weight gain slash loss? I suppose it can be for whatever you want it to be. Um, like I said, I just kind of wanted to get myself into a routine of being healthier. Like I wanted to be more consistent with working out and with cooking and eating healthier and also lose just a little bit of weight as well. But the main focus for me was to just like get myself back on track with a good solid routine. Someone asked what was the easiest part of 75 hard? I think it was probably the no drinking other than like the two nights or three nights where I was out around other people that were drinking where I was a bit like, oh, like, so even then, I think, I feel like once I was actually there and in the thick of like the night, um, I felt fine. I was actually more than fine just like sipping away on my Coke Zero. Yeah, I'd probably say like the drinking was the easiest part. And I think that actually helped doing it during 
winter time and especially during january because i think a lot of people do dry jan anyway so not many people are like out drinking during january so it's quite a nice time to do it in that sense i think had i done it in the summer i would have found the no drinking harder because especially when it's like sunny and hot outside love myself a bottomless brunch love myself like a trip to jukes couple of drinks out in the sun holiday love myself like a cocktail on the beach so I think I would have found it harder then. But yeah, I think like because of the time of year, especially that I did it, the drinking was probably the easiest. How have you kept up discipline? You know, I think the biggest thing that probably kept me motivated and disciplined is the fact that I put it online, that I was doing 75 hard. Like I remember the 1st of January, I posted my first little like vlog of 75 hard saying, I'm doing 75 hard for the next 75 days, I'm doing X, Y, Z. I feel like in doing that and putting it on TikTok, I was like, okay, I actually have to do this now because if I don't stick to this for 75 days, I'm just gonna look really stupid. Also the fact that I did it with Dan, I was like, if he's doing it, I'm sticking to it. Like I don't wanna be the one that flakes and like gives up. Honestly think documenting the whole thing is really useful. Even if you don't post it online, even if you just film it for yourself. I think it's also really fun to like put it on TikTok or put it on YouTube because you then, find other people that are also doing 75 hard have people like following the journey you just have like more willpower to stick to it because it's like okay i'm actually like documenting this now i'm actually putting it online like showing the whole journey that kind of thing i actually think it's something really good to do have you noticed any significant changes in your body as i said i just looked like more toned and a little bit leaner i don't think i really lost a lot of weight but i didn't weigh myself so i didn't like weigh myself before 75 hard and then after 75 hard because i don't like weighing myself yeah that for me is just like something that i don't like to do i know some people are similar when it comes to calories some people don't like to calorie count which i absolutely understand i think we all have things that we're like comfortable doing and not comfortable doing so i didn't actually weigh myself so i have no idea like how much weight i lost but in terms of how i looked before versus how i looked after i definitely looked a little bit slimmer and i definitely looked a little bit more toned um, which is all I really wanted. I just wanted to feel a little bit more like toned and defined. How did you stay motivated on days where you just couldn't be bothered? So I have to say for the first like week, I didn't really experience those days. I guess because it's the very start of the challenge. And I also think like when you're first starting something, it's really exciting and you're like, yes, I can do this. It was around sort of like day 30 where I really was like, okay, I cannot be bothered. I was also due on at the time. Um, so that was probably like to do with it as well. Just kind of did like the bare minimum <laughs> because I think that's absolutely fine to do. So I would do like a really chilled yoga as my indoor workout so that I'd still done a workout for the day but it wasn't something that I was gonna hate every single second of because I just think there's no fun in doing that. Like there's no fun in doing a workout that you absolutely detest and don't want to do. So if there's ever days where I was just really, really struggling, I just did the bare minimum. For dinner, I would order a Nando's, obviously keeping it like healthy and high protein. So I'd get like a chicken wrap and broccoli on the side but it also meant that I didn't need to cook. So then again, that kind of felt a little bit like a treat in that sense. If I was ever craving something sweet, I'd maybe have like a sweet smoothie um, or I'd have like a hot chocolate, like options hot chocolate was the one thing that I did allow myself to have if I was ever craving something chocolatey or sweet. Um, so I just, I don't know, I would just kind of try to make the day as easy as possible if I was really struggling because you're bound to have days like that and that's why I also think it's important to not overdo it when it comes to the exercise because you have to work out every single day for 75 hard so you don't want to wake up if you've done like a really really heavy gym session on like say on day one you don't want to go to the gym do a really heavy gym session and then wake up on day two and be absolutely in agony because then you're just not gonna wanna do anything on day two. So I just, I feel like as long as you're not pushing yourself too hard, it can always like balance out a little bit. And then once you've got so far, find that because you've gotten so far, you don't wanna give up. Like it was kind of almost a blessing that I started feeling that way at day 30 because I was like, well, I've done 30 days. Like I can't give up now. I'm basically nearly halfway through. Like I just need to keep pushing. <laughs> I remember when I put this story up actually, I had so many people, cause I basically missed my two workouts on the day that I posted this story. The reason I'd missed them is because I'd been on a shoot from like 
I'd been up at 6 a.m. I don't think I got home until 7 p.m. And this was at like more peak winter time. So it was dark in the morning, dark when I got home. I didn't take Freddie out for a walk because he'd been at daycare all day. And then I didn't do an indoor workout because I was absolutely shattered. And I remember like saying that on stories because I was like, I'm not gonna lie about it. Like there was a couple of days where I like didn't do I missed one workout so like I wouldn't I didn't do my indoor workout for example but I then doubled it up the next day so I always made sure I hit the right amount of workouts which I think some people would argue is failing or like cheating but I do also just think life gets in the way sometimes like that day where I missed both my workouts there was just no way like there was no way I was getting a workout in let alone two workouts in I was absolutely shattered I've been on my feet all day. I'd barely eaten because it had been a very, very busy shoe. Yeah, there was just no way I was getting my workouts in. So I was like, do you know what? I'm just gonna do them tomorrow. I think it was day like 65 at this point. So there's no way I was starting fresh either. I think like if you ever get to a day where you miss a workout, as long as you make it up at some point, to me, maybe this is me making my own, own rules, but I think that's absolutely fine personally. Oh my gosh, how can I forget about my walking pad as well? That was another thing that I love doing as an indoor workout. I got, a desk treadmill and it was just wonderful because again that was a great workout for days where I just could not be bothered um because I'm on my laptop every single day whether I'm editing answering emails shopping <laughs> whatever it is I'm always at some point on my laptop during the day and I also find that this would be a really good thing to have for people that have like nine to fives because I had a lot of questions about um, whether or not I think doing 75 hard is doable with a 9 to 5 job. Having a desk treadmill, I think if you're someone that has like an office job or you work from home, having a desk treadmill comes in so handy because it is such an easy way to get an indoor workout in. Some people might not class that as an indoor workout, but to me, walking is a workout and it also just gets you off your feet, stretching your legs, you're not sat down all day. If you are someone that works at a desk or at a computer and some days again when I just felt really tired and I'd maybe done Pilates every other day and I didn't want to do another Pilates I would do an indoor workout on my treadmill and I found that that was so much easier like that is just so doable and um, so yeah I really recommend getting one of those as well especially if you're someone who has like an office job or a, like a computer job and in terms of I think it's doable doing a nine-to-five job because I can completely appreciate that I do YouTube and socials full-time so this is like my full-time job and doing 75 hard does take up time the se the the 45 minute workouts that's like an hour and a half of exercise every single day which is obviously like time consuming and for someone with a 95 it's really hard for me to answer that because I think it depends on what your job is if you travel to work if you have to travel far to work if I'm to go off like you have a nine to five and you go into the office and it takes you like 30 minutes to commute, 30 minutes to come home. I think the way I would try to do it is I would try to get my outdoor walk done on my lunch. So I do a 45 minute walk outdoors every day on my lunch if that's possible. And then I would really utilize home workouts, which is what I did anyway. So depending on if you're someone who likes to get up early or if you are more of like a night owl, you can pick if you want to do your indoor workout in the morning before work or after work and then yeah I would just do like a 45 minute hit class or Pilates, yoga, whatever it is. Obviously you can kind of mix them all up as well but I also then find that that cuts out having to go to a gym. So I think it really depends on like what your 9 to 5 job is and like how far you have to commute if you do commute. I am very lucky in the sense that I have a lot more like free time during the day so I have like the whole morning to do my workouts. It could also be worth looking into 75 soft. Um, I think 75 soft is one workout a day, six days a week. So you get a full rest day as well, where you don't have to do any exercise. Um, drinking on social occasions, so you can actually drink if you go out or if it's a birthday. I'm not sure what the diet aspect is, but I just know it's a lot more 
doable compared to 75 hard so if you're kind of debating doing it and you're not sure whether you want to fully commit to doing 75 hard and you also don't maybe have as much time to commit to something like 75 hard I feel like trying 75 soft first could be like a really good option because it just is a little less time consuming and probably like a little bit more doable and then it kind of gives you like a taste for whether you want to do 75 hard or not I honestly think I would do it again like I would do 75 hard again I'm gonna try to maintain the two workouts a day doing Pilates every day and obviously like taking Freddie out is part of my daily routine anyway and then the diet I am gonna try to maintain as well I think I'm maybe gonna have like one naughty takeaway a week um and just have little bits of like chocolate and unhealthy snacks here and there and that's how I'm going to kind of work it. But yeah, that is pretty much like my whole experience, journey, things that I've learned, pieces of advice that I would give for anyone wanting to try 75 hard. But yeah, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. I feel like I've been, I've been waffling for an hour. This video so far has been an hour. I'm probably going to cut a lot of it out. <laughs> um, but I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching as always. Um, if there's any other videos that you want to see anytime soon, then definitely let me know. But I hope you're all having a lovely weekend and I will see you in the next one.